I'm one of, humbly, one of the best basketball players in the world. You know, go through struggles, go through slumps. It's a long game. So Jason Tatum probably with one of the most controversial post-game interviews that I have seen. I don't even know what to say to that. But Jason Tatum did start the game shooting 7.7% from the field, but he turned it up in the fourth quarter and shot the ball at a 50% field goal and carried his team to a game six victory. But in today's video, we will be looking at how Jason Tatum went from playing so bad in the first three quarters to playing absolutely amazing and clutch in the fourth quarter. We will also be looking at Jalen Brown and Marcus Smart and how they fit into this very complex offensive scheme that really gets them open as well. So first you may be asking how the hell did Jason Tatum play so good in the fourth quarter out of nowhere? And this is because of the willingness that the coach has to make Jalen Brown set a screen for Jason Tatum. And in fact, this type of thing does not happen as Jalen Brown has only set Tatum nine screens this whole series. And a good example of this was on this play when Jason Tatum calls a screen from Jalen Jalen Brown, but instead of going into the screen, he goes the opposite way and completely loses Tyrese Maxey with a pullback move. And on this play, they also run another pick and roll, but they use Jason Tatum in this case. And you know that Marcus Smart was playing amazing, so Tatum was acting like he was setting a play for Marcus Smart, but when he sets his pick, he pops right out, Marcus Smart finds him for the wide open three pointer. So these plays contributed to Jason Tatum's 16 points in the fourth quarter alone. Now let's shift our attention to Marcus Smart and he was probably one of the most important players in this game as he ran most of the offensive plays that got everyone else including himself open. And on this play, Marcus Smart is a floor general and he tells Al Horford to set Tatum an off ball screen. Tatum comes off the off ball screen, then purposely penetrates in the pain to attract three defenders and when this happens Tatum kicks it out to Marcus Smart for a wide open three-pointer and on the topic of penetration in the paint this was done multiple times by Jalen Brown as well and on this play Brown gets the ball in the corner he pump fakes and drives right at the rim to attract three defenders then kicks it out to Marcus Smart for another wide open three and another surprising thing was that the Celtics were letting Marcus Smart do a lot of pick and rolls for Jason Tatum and this worked wonders as on this play, Marcus Smart sets a screen for Jason Tatum and he goes right inside the paint, gets his defender behind him, pump fakes and then makes a wide open paint jumper. So the Celtics offense is pretty abnormal as well because they have a lot of guards running pick and rolls and this is something that I don't really see with other teams. And also on the topic of pick and rolls, Marcus Smart was running a lot of those pick and rolls with Robert Williams and it was pretty unstoppable to say the least. On this play, Marcus Smart gets a screen by Robert Williams and he makes sure that Tyrese Maxey is behind him so he has enough room to get this out the oop off and once maxi is behind smart smart lobs it off for robert williams and williams grabs it and dunks it home for the celtics and similarly on this play marcus smart gives the ball to robert williams and he runs behind him so that robert williams can have the shorter james harden on him so the lob is easier to get off and this worked wonders as marcus smart drove right at the rim and threw it up for robert williams and williams dunked it down for the celtics but the Celtics are gonna need Derek White to step up as well because this is gonna take some pressure off of Marcus Smart. Instead, Derek White is going to the barbershop and asking for a fade as his forehead gets bigger and bigger. It kind of reminds me of my YouTube channel. But in all seriousness, the offense we just broke down would not be possible without the isolation basketball that Jalen Brown loves to play. So let's break down some film on how he gets open on his dribble pull-ups. On this play, Jalen Brown does a change of pace and acts like he's gonna drive but instead he pulls up leaning back and makes a shot so it's impossible for pj tucker to block and on this next play he uses his threat of a mid-range shot to bait pj tucker into a foul and he does this by doing a pull back and pump fake and this pump fake makes pj tucker bite resulting in a foul and after these two plays the philadelphia 76ers started doubling jalen brown and once again his isolation ability is the reason why these plays even went down and on this play, Jalen Brown is just bringing the ball up on a man-to-man -man isolation. And when he gets double teamed, just kicks it out to Derek White for a wide open three-pointer. Having players like Brown that are able to play basketball by themselves really makes it difficult for the 
opposition as then they have to double and it makes your offensive schemes so much easier to execute. And another reason for the Celtics victory was their ability to play make as a team. When comparing the 76ers assists to the Celtics assists, the Celtics had 22 assists as a team while the Sixers only had 18. The lack of ball movement on the 76ers side is what probably caused them to be stagnant and lose to the Celtics near the end of the game. And transitioning on from this, another big impact on the Celtics squad was Malcolm Brogdon and this guy shot lights out from the three. He went 4 for 6 from the 3 point line and shot a 3 point at a 66% efficiency. Let's take a look at how we exploited the 76ers defense and scored over them. The first reason why Brogdon was so dominant was his ability to know when to pull the 3 in the transition. On this play Malcolm Brogdon knows that the Celtics have the advantage because Tobias Harris is trailing on the defensive side giving them a one man advantage so Malcolm Brogdon instantly grabs the ball and pulls for the 3 pointer. On this play Jason Tatum does a jab step to attract a double team, kicks it out to Derek White, Derek White gives the ball back to Malcolm Brogdon and Malcolm Brogdon knocks down a big 3 pointer. So going back to my first point about ball movement and assisting, we can clearly see that the Celtics have the upper hand here as they're getting people open and attracting double teams. The Celtics roster is constructed with a lot of players that work well with each other, a lot of pick and roll big men like Al Horford and Robert Williams that really deserve the love. I don't think without Robert Williams and Horford this offense would even be possible because it just a lot of pick and rolls are happening at once and Robert Williams is a lob threat. Having a lob threat really makes Marcus Smart even more dangerous because he has other options if his jump shot is not going down. Including Robert Williams and Horford's being lob threats. You know, these two big men give the Celtics the ability to get blocks and play basketball in the transition. Tatum is very good in the transition. Jalen Brown is a very fast slasher. So in theory, when Horford and Robert Williams are getting more blocks, that's how fast paced the Celtics offense is going to be. Even looking how defense turns into offense, we could look at players like Derek White, Marcus Smart, Jason Tatum. All these players are very defensively inclined players that love to get steals and play basketball in the transition as well. So this is a very unique roster when we look at it because if we compare this roster to a Sacramento team, a Sacramento team relies solely on their offensive plays whereas the Boston Celtics rely on turning defense into offense and that's why it makes it so complex. And guys, Joe Mazzulla has been impressing me taking over the spot of the cheating husband and he has been doing an amazing job. But let me know who you guys think is going to get the victory in game 7. Will it be the Celtics or will it be the Sixers? And let me know who impresses you offensively on this Celtics team that doesn't get enough love. But before you leave, make sure you smash the like button and make sure you hit that subscribe button as it just lets me know you guys enjoyed today's video and helps me put out best quality content that I could possibly put out. That's been all for your boy Muzzy Hoops. I will catch you guys in the next video.